I need a break from laptops, so I'm gonna be diversifying the content a little bit. I wanna talk about some top tech gadgets I'm currently using, not the big mainstream stuff that you've seen already, but more of the little things that I have around the studio that I find super interesting, and I'm hoping you do too. Now, a portion of this video is sponsored by Best Buy. Like they sent out this Bose portable smart speaker. It's an expensive speaker, but the sound quality on this thing is absolutely superb. If you want something that is easy to travel with, has good sound, especially on the low end and high end, this is a good one. It also happens to be water resistant, so if you're camping and it starts to rain, it's not gonna break down on you. It has excellent battery life, 12 hours of use before needing to charge. Buttons are at the top so you can easily manipulate the sound if you wanna lower the volume or change the song. But most importantly, it works both with Google Assistant and Amazon Alexa. Even if you have an iPhone, it supports AirPlay too. If you have other Bose products in your household, you can pair it up with them so you can have more than one speaker playing at the same time. So high-end speaker, if you're looking for one, this is the guy to check out. The second item is something I use every single day. This is a portable external NVMe SSD. It's by SanDisk, it's their Extreme Pro. This is a four terabyte drive. This is the drive that I use to edit all my footage on. When I'm done editing it, I offload it to my backup server. But the reason why I use external drives is because I can bring it home with me and continue editing there. The read and write speeds are about a thousand megabytes a second, so it's fairly fast. But most importantly, it's durable. It has a very durable design. I don't feel like this is gonna break on me. There's a place if I wanna put my keys around here. And it also happens to be water and dust resistant. Now for this one, I was contemplating on even showing it just because the crypto market is so bad right now. But I do invest a little bit in crypto, not a lot. I just play around with it. And if you wanna store your crypto, do not do it online, unless you're gonna be moving around funds quite often. But for the most part, if you're holding it, do it cold, okay? Get a cold wallet because there's a saying in the crypto space, not your keys, not your coins. If you leave your money on an exchange, those are not your keys. The exchange owns your keys. If the exchange goes bankrupt, say goodbye to your crypto. This doesn't have access to your computer, 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 unless you physically connect it to it. So even if someone steals this or they hack my computer, there's no way they can get to my crypto. Now this is the Ledger Nano X. I have used the smaller Nano, the cheaper one, but the problem with the smaller one is you can only fit so many coins on there. This allows you to use a lot more. It also has a very pretty interface. I'm gonna show you my portfolio. It's nothing crazy. It's really, really minor, but I like the fact that the software is also very beautiful to look at. You can also check the market on there as well. You can send and receive directly through the Ledger app. It's just a great little cold wallet to store all your crypto on. Now, this is expensive and I don't recommend this to most people unless you want a super high end charging experience for your Apple Watch and your iPhone. This is from Nomad. They make beautiful Apple accessories, and this is their MagSafe Base One Max charger. It's certified. It doesn't require you to connect a separate Apple charger to it like some other chargers do. This is one kilogram, like it is heavy. It has this solid metal base, a rubber padding, so it doesn't scratch your furniture, and it can charge your iPhone and an Apple Watch at the exact same time. Usually with other chargers, it kind of, they kind of slide on the table. This thing is not going anywhere. It can do your watch, or sorry, your iPhone up to 15 watts, and it requires a 30 watt charger on the back to charge both devices at the same time. If you don't have an Apple Watch, it will still wirelessly charge your phone, and it will also wirelessly charge your smartwatch as long as it supports Qi charging. Now, I'm not a huge keyboard nerd, but I know there's a big boom in the mechanical space from customizing the switches to the keycaps to the way the keyboard functions and feels. I don't have time for that. I just wanna buy a good keyboard. And I came across the Cooler Master CK721. It's been my daily driver since the moment it came out. I love these switches. These are the linear switches, four millimeters of travel distance. It's definitely a bit louder than let's say blue switches, but it's not too loud. It has good deep travel distance. It feels great to type on, but it's also quick enough for gaming. Of course, you have that RGB. You can customize it using the software, even per key if you really want to. You can change the metal top to any color you want, and you have a volume rocker. This is a metal volume rocker. So important to, on a keyboard, I will not use a keyboard without a volume control. It's just, it's just not the same. 
Now, you can connect this wirelessly using the included dongle, which you can store in the side over here. It's also Bluetooth and it's also wired. Now, this is probably one of my favorite accessories to use right now. It's called the Stream Deck Pedal. It sits under your desk. It connects via USB Type-C to your computer. And the things you can do with it is absolutely amazing. Think of this as having a third hand. These are all buttons. You have three different buttons on the Stream Deck. So if you're a gamer, for example, you can press one button, it'll mute the chat. Maybe you wanna press the other one to unmute your in-game chat. Maybe you wanna set up another one to switch cameras. You basically have endless ways to control what you're doing on screen. You can even use this for video editing. Like you can set this up to cut the footage. You can set this up to scroll forward or back. There's different profiles depending on the application you're using. So even though technically you only have three different buttons, depending on the application you're using, you have so many possibilities. Now the last accessory is from a company called Paperlike. And I'm on the fence about this. It really depends what you're using your iPad mostly for. If you're drawing a lot and taking a lot of notes and that's your primary function with your iPad, you're gonna love this. You apply it on top, it's softer, it feels a lot more like paper. I can't stand writing on the iPad without it because the pen and the screen is just too hard. It feels like you're tapping on glass. With this, it totally changes the experience. But the problem with it though, is that it introduces a little bit of noise. The material they're using is a little grainy, okay? and it makes the screen look matte. So it's better for reflections, but it makes everything look a bit dirty. So if you're using your iPad to edit photos, you're not gonna appreciate this. So strictly for writing only, if you're buying it for protection and that's it, use a different product instead. Okay, that wraps up this video of the top tech gadgets I'm currently using. I promise to do more videos like this. If you're interested in picking up the Bose portable smart speaker, there'll be links in the description down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.